from somewhere, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I'm talking a little more. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Samantha Brett writes an advice column in Australia for a newspaper called the Sydney Morning Herald. It's called Ask Sam. And this piece is called Types of Women Men Don't Want to Commit to. (laughs) Here it is. I am always attracted to the men that have commitment issues, said a recently dumped friend, valiantly trying to figure out what went wrong. I think I'm just attracted to the type of man who isn't into a relationship. I get too emotionally attached. But all they're really after is a quick shag and then they want to move on to their next conquest. But I wasn't so sure. The last three men she dated had all started out desperately wanting to shag up with her in connubial bliss. After all, says Samantha Brett, the columnist. She is six foot with a hot Pilates bod and a tomboy streak that sends any man's pheromones spitting in a tizzy. Yet after dating them for around three to four months, everything suddenly goes pear-shaped. All three have whipped out the age-old antiquated axiom, I'm just not ready for a relationship. By the way, when somebody, ladies, let me translate for you. When a man says, I'm just not ready for a relationship, you have to add the two words that are missing. That is not a complete sentence. Did you know that? The actual sentence says, I'm just not ready for a relationship. With you. The column continues. While she's currently sitting at 043 and mightily confused, it could be easy to conclude a pertinent message that has emerged. It's not them. It's her. Coming on too strong, perhaps? Too emotionally needy? When I suggested this little fact to her, she wasn't buying it. Maybe it's because subconsciously I don't want to commit, she retorted. I'm repeatedly asked out by Mr. Nice, but I'm just not interested. He doesn't give me that excitement that I crave either. There are many women around the world that are complaining of the same conundrum. They simply can't snag a boyfriend, let alone a husband or even a relationship that lasts more than the four-month mark. So what is it about these women that makes an eligible man run a mile? In trying to come up with a short list of things, of things women shouldn't do to get a man to commit, I decided to consult a bunch of folks to determine where the women are going wrong. Then she has bullet points here. One example, women are too needy. When women try desperately to get their man to commit, she tends to turn in his eyes into a bona fide bunny-boiling psychopath 
who is trying to cramp his style and close him in. A continuous stream of phone calls, barrage of text messages, invitations, outings with her folks, and temper tantrums if he wants to see his mates is enough to make him all but run away to the desert to remain celibate for all eternity. Another bullet point. Women who pretend they never want to settle down. Modern women have been warned not to come on too strong, but instead to revel in their singlehood. Yet many have taken this go-girl feminist mantra a tad too far. Instead of being the doting girlfriend who continually hints at marriage and forces her boyfriend to go wedding ring shopping on a whim, this new type of gal pretends she doesn't want to commit and vehemently denies the fact that she ever wants to walk down the aisle or have babies anytime soon. But alas, the bloke she has snogged is wondering if there is ever a future with this lass, and hence the tables are turned. Before you can shout career woman, he's off trying to find himself someone else upon him, whom his cluckiness won't be wasted on. Is that correct grammar in Australia, by the way? Really? Hmm. Another bullet point. Women who try to change their man. There is nothing that scares a bloke away more, aside from Celine Dion concert tickets, than a woman who wants to change him. When his sense of style, the way he refuses to put product in his hair or the amount of time he spends with his mates is judged, criticized, and disparaged, you can be guaranteed he'll instantly transform into a commitment phobe from her. Well, that sounds like what I say. And the final bullet point in this piece, the be like me woman. Some women believe that once they're in a relationship, their man must become just like them. So she attempts to turn him into a Pilates going, vegan eating, chick flick loving gent who isn't allowed to drink beer, play footy with his mates, soccer, or gasp, watch porn. Enough said. That's her column. I think it's a good call. And I think um, I think it makes some very interesting points. Because every man listening to this program, every man, including myself, I guess I'm listening to myself speak here. Every man listening to this program has been with a woman who complained that we are not ready to settle down or we are not willing to commit. Now, I must say that over the past several years that's been true. I have no interest in committing to anybody. But that's after I've been divorced four times. I tried committing. It didn't work for me. So now I have uh, been difficult about committing to anyone for any reason. But I do know from talking to you guys who call in, many of you uh, say you're quote-unquote looking for the right girl or you're quote-unquote looking to settle down or you quote-unquote have had your fun or whatever. And many of us have been in that position of feeling that way or thinking that way. And we meet a woman and we think uh, she's got possibilities. And then indeed, like this column says, she starts going crazy, going psycho, calling, texting, demanding, critiquing, complaining, trying to change us, whatever. And suddenly we're not interested so much anymore. And they just can't figure out why. I know there are men listening right now. And I don't recommend you be this kind of man, but I know you're out there. There are men listening right now who would love, love to be married. Love to settle down with somebody. Love to have children. Love some kind of permanence or some kind of whatever with 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 another person. I'm always warning you against it, but I know you're all out there because you call in and tell me. And I'm sure that there are some of you who have dealt uh, with these uh, women who are in complete denial. You know, they wonder why you won't buy them a wedding ring or why you haven't asked them to marry them yet. And the reality is, you will never ever ask them, never. Never. You'll never do it. You'll never do it. No one will ever do it, probably. Because they've got these issues. These are women that you just can't stand to be around. 
Boy, I've seen many situations like this, and I've been in many situations like this. Holy cow. And these women just think that they love saying that men are afraid of commitment. They love using words like afraid. Oh, yeah, we're afraid. Like accuse us of being little pussies. We're not afraid of commitment. We don't want a commitment with you. Do you understand? I am reminded of the woman I dated who one time had the, well, she heard me do a radio program where I, and I've talked about this many times, she heard me do a radio program where I talked about women who uh, dreamed of being with Prince Charming when they grew up, that he would come along on a white horse and sweep her off her feet, and they would ride into the sunset where her all her bills would be paid, her visa bill, her MasterCard bill, her American Express bill, her student loan balance, her car payment, all her expenses. They would all be paid. And I said, ladies, look across the breakfast table tomorrow morning. You see that guy scratching his ass? You see that balding, fat, slovenly guy who takes a shower every three days? That's your Prince Charming right there. Because you couldn't do any better than that. And these women went berserk. They all started calling me and saying, oh, yes, I could do much better. But the reality is, ladies, you can't. You did as well as you could do. I mean, why would you marry somebody you didn't deserve? You married the person you deserved. Those of you who got married. There's no doubt about it. Women went crazy. And a woman that I was involved with at the time, she went ballistic. Telling me how she could have done much better than me. And I went back in time and reviewed some of the people she had dated in the past. The Formula One driver. Hot guy. Sports car driving. Formula One driver. <laughs> he didn't marry her. In fact, when she met him, he had a girlfriend. Which he didn't tell her about until after she got involved with him. <laughs> Later, after he didn't marry her through all the time they were dating, when she uh, ended up uh, getting with me, he married the previous girlfriend. Had a kid with her, too, I believe. Blah. Then there was the dashing debonair entertainment industry executive, big-time guy, big money, big important muckety-muck in the entertainment industry. He once told her, you know, I've been a bachelor all my life, but if I were ever going to marry somebody, it would be you. And that's what he said every time she pressured him to marry her. So ultimately, uh, she uh, left him, and uh, later he found out she was with me. He married somebody else. He was 47. He never married anybody. He finally married somebody else. You know, she said she could have done much better, but the reality is, she, reality is she couldn't. The guys that she wanted the most, they were using her as a booty call. They had no interest in her. They had no interest in marrying her. They had no interest in having children with her. They had no interest in having any financial involvement with her. She was convenient for a few boffs, and then uh, they, they, they unceremoniously dumped her. So the reality is that water seeks its own level, and she finally floated, uh, you know, floated downward until she ended up with me, the guy in the radio business. And the reality is that I was the best she could do. I was the best she could do. And this drove her crazy. But it's true. And by the way, I dumped her too. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. So when we talk about these women who, uh, you know, they talk about commitment and they want to get us to commit. Many times the reason we don't commit is not because we are commitment phobic. Many times the reason we don't commit is because, well, we don't want to commit with the particular person who's demanding the commitment. Just because we won't commit to you doesn't mean we won't commit. It just means we don't want to be obligated to you. I'll bet many of you men have dated women like this who demanded a commitment. And you said to yourself, yeah, it's one thing to bone this chick, but to actually have to like pay her bills? No. To actually have to listen to her nag me all the time? No. 
to actually have to see her trying to change me all the time or tell me I can't have friends anymore or tell me to stop smoking weed? or No. No, the minute she takes away the opportunity to bone her, I'll move on. There are a lot of women who are foaming at the mouth as I say this. There are a lot of guys going, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. Does this make sense to you? Tom. 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 Like it's 1-800-5800-TOM. People always say to me, they say, um, well, do you have a daughter? I, I usually tell them. I say, no, I usually have somebody else's daughter. <laughs> Sometimes twice. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yeah, the Tom Likas Show. At one 800 800 tom thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. All these chicks trying to extract commitment. Ladies, why can't you just enjoy what you got? If you're having a good time, just live it up. Huh? Andrew, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. All right, man. Uh, first time caller. I just recently started listening to you about a year ago. I'm a big fan. Totally cool. All right, man. Uh, get straight to it. I've been seeing this girl on it for about two weeks, right? And about the third time we got together, I was already talking about wanting to have a kid. And I'm sure he has a kid. I remember why? Why? Wait, 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 wait. What are you doing dating a single mother? Why not? For the quick because she will get pregnant again like she did the last time. No, no, no. I use, what do you mean, uh, hell, though? She, she's telling you she wants to have more kids. Yeah, there's, during uh, mid-sex. During what? Excuse me? What's that noise in the background there? So I'm, a, I'm a driver. I have to turn on my, my CD radio. Tur well, how about you turn that down? Yeah, sorry about that, Tom. Okay, go ahead. Now, why are you dating a single mother? I wasn't dating her. I was just like, I've only hooked up with her three times. Right. And aren't you worried that that condom might slip, break, crack, leak, fall off, get yeah, pulled off? Possibly. Yeah, and what happens when that happens? Yeah, I go get it fixed. Get what fixed? Get it fixed. I'll take it to the clinic. You, what, you're gonna, what, you think she's going to have an abortion? She's a single mother. <laughs> yeah, I know. How do you think that happened? Yeah, I know. In the first place, she wanted me to... Oh, she's trying to pull a quick one, too. Try to take off the condom mid, uh, during mid-play. Mid Stop that right there and throw another one on. Well, that, 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 wait a minute. So so she's already doing it. That was the first time she did it. It'll be the last time. You only had that. sex... Wait, wait. Stop. You only had sex for the three times. Yeah. So one out of the three times, she tried to pull the condom off. Yeah. So do you see what she wants? Yeah. Uh, babies, please. babies. Yeah, I'm right. Sure. And and you don't care. Yeah, I do care. That's why she never gonna see my face again. Oh, so you're not gonna see her anymore? No, that was, that was it. After she gave me that spiel about uh, you willing to have my second kid? Was, <laughs> the last time you seen this mug. Well, but, but the point is, when you date a single mother, that's always a possibility. Yeah, it was my first time dating a single mom. It was hot, just so I could say I was uh, seeing the milf, but. I got over. I got over quick. So are you going to do that again? No. You're not? No. All right. At all. At you're, all. Wor you're worrying me here, Andrew. <laughs> no need to worry, Tom. I'm gone. She ain't never seen me again. Plus, she never knew where I live. Nothing. Out of my area. Out of sight. No, well, she might have your driver's license or your, no. your car never license. went through my phone. Never went through my wallet. I don't play yep. that. She never oh, saw yeah. your car? She never saw your no. car? Never seen my car. Never? Never. i only been in an apartment once, and that was Saturday. And uh, one of the apartments, you got to block like 10, 10 miles away and walk up, so I'm good. Okay. Yeah. But, but uh, now, here's the thing. She thought she was in a relationship with you. You understand that. No, no, she, I always have made it clear that I'm not her boyfriend. And yet, for some dumb reason, she thought she was going to persuade me. I don't play that. Well, because many women think when you're having sex with them that you are in a relationship. Yeah. I always, I always clarified it. Always. Never once. I promise I never painted a perfect picture or nothing. I hope not. I hope not. Yeah, I hope honestly. not. 
I don't think oh, yeah. pictures. Stay, you know what? If you want to do a MILF, get one who's like, you know, 62 years old. Oh, no, that's a, that's a cougar. I mean, that's a saber tooth or whatever. Well, whatever. Point is, you can't have kids. Ooh, after the menopause? I don't want to know that. Well, what's uh, after menopause? No more children. That's <laughs> gross, though. Nothing but dust. Well, the, the point is, you want a MILF. The point, they, they, I, I don't want they, a saber. I don't want an old. How do they become mothers in the first place? What did you say? So, how do they become mothers in the first place? They suckered some guy into impregnating them. Now, a guy who probably has to pay the bills. Yeah. That's okay with you, huh? No, no. Not okay. All right. Don't do it anymore. I won't, Tom. I just want to call and share how uh, dumb women could be and how I was listening to the show. So I'm on the long drive right now. I was like, I got to call Tom. Well, I'm glad you did, Andrew. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. This all started talking about an article that was written by a woman in a um, an Australian magazine or newspaper, the Sydney Morning Herald. And she was talking in there about uh, guys who don't want to commit. And it's pretty obvious who those guys are. The guys who don't want to commit. We are the guys who don't want any, any responsibility with somebody like you. In fact, many of the guys who say they don't want to commit, they're not afraid of commitment. They're just afraid of commitment with you. You scare them. You antagonize them. You threaten them. You try to change them, ladies. You do it. And I just love the way women are in denial by trying to say that we are all afraid. We're not afraid of commitment. We're afraid of you. You. Women can't accept that idea. It's like the other thing we talk about on this program all the time. The woman who's saying, I had sex with him and he never called me. And, and you just assume we're jerks. God, I wish we men were jerks like that. Usually the reason a man doesn't call you is because he doesn't like you. Ladies, I hate to tell you, but if you have had sex with a man who didn't call you, it's because he didn't like you. Didn't like the way you looked naked. Didn't like the way you spoke to him. Didn't think you were a cool chick. We men don't hear a word you say until after we've seen you naked, had sex with you. So you have to understand the idea, ladies, that if we have sex with you and it's fantastic, we're going to call you back. If we have fun, we're going to call you back. We're going to call you again and again. And I can prove it to you, ladies. Have you ever been with a guy who won't stop calling you? I mean, he calls you from morning till night. Have you ever been with a guy like that? Of course you have. Of course you have. That guy, you didn't like him, but he really, really liked you. When a guy really, really likes you, he calls you. When a guy wants to be in a relationship with you, he'll tell you. And many men start off appearing to want to be in a relationship when they change their mind or they change their attitude. You have to stop blaming it on him and start thinking to yourself, what did I do wrong? What did I do to alienate this guy who was a perfectly good, pros perfectly good prospect before and now he's not? What did I do? And women can't accept the idea that they did something to turn him against them. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Veronica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, I'm, Bra I'm Veronica. I was just calling to make a comment on what you guys were saying about um, single moms entrapping guys. Okay. That's crap. That's crap. I'm a single mom. I have two kids. And the only reason that guy's having problems with her is not because she's a single mom, but because she's psycho. And she's trying to trap him or whatever. But for you guys to classify all single moms... I never use that. the word all. I'm just saying that uh, the vast majority of single moms want to be moms. They want and they, wouldn't mind, they want to be moms, and they wouldn't mind if they were moms again. For any number of reasons. They like kids. They want more kids. They want money from the guy. They want commitment. They want a marriage. The vast majority of single moms would, would not mind if they got knocked up again. Okay, but well, I just thought that you guys were saying that about everyone. Now, you're saying most women think like that. Again, 
That guy oh. is an idiot. The guy I don't, I idiot. don't use the word all. Do you understand? There are exceptions to every rule. So what? I don't know. That guy is just an idiot. If you're the exception to the rule, does that mean if you are the exception to the rule, does that mean the rule is not valid? No, I guess not. So why are you taking this so personally? I'm not really taking it personally. I was just feeling a little offended by the fact that you guys were saying that single moms are, are looking in trap guys and all generally, that. That generally, and generally, 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 they are. I guess so. I guess even if, yeah. even well, if you don't, yeah. I guess I'm the one out of everyone. Well, who cares? I, I, you know, we can't do a radio show and look at the phone book and check each person individually. You know, I'm yeah. talking to millions of people here. I have to generalize. I have to stereotype because I can't do a show that's customized to each individual who's tuned in. Yeah, I guess so. And I you and, and you are. By the way, let's point out. The reality is you agree with what I said. Turn the radio well, off. Turn the radio I'm off. Not. Turn okay. the radio <laughs> off. <laughs> Turn the radio off, you said. I don't know. I'm just saying there's a lot of stuff that you have to factor in before banging a chick like that. That's all I'm saying. Now, the stuff you factor in is most single mothers wouldn't mind if they got knocked up again. So stay away from them. I don't think that's true at all. You, but you, I in this, if you have two, I have two kids. I don't want any more kids. I, well, girl, but again, we're not talking. That. This show is not the Veronica show. This is not a show about you. <laughs> all right, all right. So my opinion doesn't matter. Most single you're, mothers, no matter what, you're going to say what you want to say. No, you already made your opinion. Even though most single mothers want to have more kids, you are not one of them. Well, that's great. It doesn't change what I said, does it? Yeah, I guess so. Well, I'm just... Even you agree with it. All the Even you agree. Even you crafted. agree with it. Even you agree with what I said. Well, it, a lot of things factor in. Age factors in, where he's meeting these girls. Too factors much in. trouble to figure it all out. Just bang chicks who are not single moms and you'll be fine. Hello? Didn't you hear what I just said? No, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. My phone's breaking I've up. I've had enough... Jesus Christ. Tom like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Like it. I, for one, believe they ought to have personal ads in the auto trader. Not a bad idea. Actually. You know, there are women out there who can advertise themselves as a 97 BMW. Not a bad idea. You know, 86 Mercedes. It's a language. You know, those real housewives of Orange County. You know, those are like 89 Mercedes. With the boob jobs and stuff, you know, I mean, they they had they, they were a comfy ride for somebody back around 1989, 88, something like that. The Tom Likas Show. Oh yeah, the Tom Likas Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. We're talking about the kind of guys you don't want to commit. It's not that they're guys who don't want to commit. They're guys who don't want to commit to you, you psychotic bitch. Daniel on the top like his show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Uh, I got a statement and a quick uh, question that I need answered. Hello? Yeah, when do you plan to get to those? You want me to make an appointment? Let me put you in my book. I think I can squeeze you in on Thursday. Uh, no, it's all right, man. <laughs> Hello? Sir, how much maintenance do you require? Do you plan to get to the point, or do I have to keep pulling it out of you uh, like right, pulling teeth? I got a wife, right? And uh, we just have you, wait, 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 wait. Stop. You have a wife? <laughs> yes, sir. How old are you? 22. Why are you married? <laughs> Why am I married? Uh, yeah. Uh, just someone I grew up with and uh, thought it was a good, good idea. Yeah, it wasn't, though, was it? <laughs> right? Yeah, yes and, I might, know, yes and by the way, you're lying to me because you told Dean this is not a wife, this was a baby mama. Uh, yeah, but we're still married. 
So, so you are married. Well, isn't that, that's your wife, not your baby mama. Who refers to their right. wife as a baby mama? I don't. You married your baby mama, didn't you? No, actually, we got married before she got pregnant. How old were you when you got married? Uh, 20. And then you did that because you knocked her up, didn't you? <laughs> no, we didn't know until after. She knew. Yeah, yeah she probably did. Yeah. And uh, what's it called? Uh, so my problem is, is that all right, we got married. She was working at the time as a, a bartender, and um, so now that um, we're working and everything, but she plans on now she wants to go to school. Doesn't know what for. But hey, watch like, your mouth. We're on the air. Oh, what do you sorry, think this I'm is? <laughs> but, you, think, uh, you think this is a back alley or something? This is a radio station. All right. And, uh, you know, she doesn't want to work. Bet she, she doesn't. Go, go ahead. I'll bet she doesn't. No, she doesn't. No. Mm. So what is your question, Sa? My question is, is like, you know, what what would be a good idea what to do with that, with that situation? Don't marry people like that. Don't marry people. <laughs> right. All right. That would be the solution. Okay. And if you and, were stupid uh, enough to marry one, divorce her. <laughs> what about that whole thing about like, the kid and everything like that? Just kid will still be there. Right. It's kind of hard to uh, support, you know, myself, the kid, and her. And, uh, you know, our plans were to work and everything like that. She doesn't want to do that. Well, if you get divorced, you do not have to pay for her education. Uh, you just pay the child support. You'll have visitation rights, and you're good to go. Right. It just drives it, I don't know. It's crazy, man. And then so, like, divorce would be, like, the really good thing to do, or... Well, I, again, she's already told you what she wants to do. Do you want her doing that? No, nah, I'd rather work. <laughs> right. By the way, do you have a college education? Let me guess. No. No. <laughs> and, and why not, sir? Uh, I guess some trouble I got got into in the past and just... What trouble was that? J yeah, jail. <laughs> what for? Uh, I'd rather not say. Get something stupid. You're anonymous. All right. Um, assaulting a police officer. You assaulted a police officer? Yeah. Why did you do that? I was 17, out partying with some friends, and I uh, thought it was, would have been funny. You thought that was funny? No. Well, now I don't know. Yeah, very funny. And yeah. how long do they put you in prison for? And you deserved it, by the way. How long were you in prison for? Uh, a couple of years. couple of years. So you're yeah. already in the hole. Right. Yeah, let, let's review. You're in the hole. You come <laughs> out of the slammer. And then you knock a chick up and get married to her. And that's going to dig you out of the hole? <laughs> All right. Good thinking there, Ace. Oh, I mean, I got a, a successful career going for me right now. As but. what? As what? As an x-ray technician. Uh-huh. How much does that pay, son? Uh, well, depending on the cert certifications and everything you got. It, it's let's, talk about your, let's talk about your certification. How much do you make? Uh, not, not as much as I should. How much? Uh, 13 an hour. Oh, thirteen dollars an hour. Right. Wow. Well, thirteen dollars an hour. How many hours do you work? Forty, thirty-five, ten. How many do you work? Uh, around sixty to seventy. You do not. <laughs> yeah, I do. Sometimes you do. All right. There's some slow weeks, but majority of yeah. the time. Slowest week. How much do you make? Uh, yeah. Slowest weeks are right around forty-seven. All right. Let's be generous and say you average a fifty-hour week. Okay. That would be $40,000 a year to support three people in Southern California. Right. And by the way, you're not going much higher than that. <laughs> I mean, 
What, because you think they were like rock star x-ray technicians to make uh, $10 million in performance? Oh, no, no, no. I don't, do you think, 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 think there are x-ray technicians who make $100,000 a year? No. All right. There aren't. So you essentially threw up your hands and said, I give up. Well, that's the thing. I'm not really a quitter in order to do that. Yes, you are. Oh, how is that? Went to jail for something stupid. Came out and didn't go to school. Except for, like, some technical trade school or some such. Right. And then uh, now you're you're making almost as much as you're ever going to make for the rest of your life and trying to support three people on it. <laughs> Good thinking. With all my certs, uh, you know what I mean? Right now, that's where I'm at. But you get raises as you make certs. How much does the highest paid person in your office make? Thirty thirty two dollars an hour. Thirty two dollars an hour. Right. So the most you can ever expect to make is about sixty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Right? No, depending on where you're working at. That's the most you can expect to make. <laughs> there's different there's CWIs, there's different stuff that you can learn and qualify for. Right. And, right, you did, and you didn't go to college. Why? Because you were busy boning your girlfriend, who became your <laughs> wife. Right. <laughs> Good thinking. Well, she's going to do whatever she wants, and you can't tell her what to do. So Exactly. So you either get divorced or live with it. Right. What are you going to do? Um, well, I'm going I'm to keep trying. Hopefully I can get her to change her way. Way of thinking. You won't. <laughs> Are women that hard hit as far as that goes? Well, aren't you the expert here, son? No, uh, apparently not, no. Oh, now you figured that out. <laughs> she's going to do exactly what she wants because she's got you by the balls. Because she got you to sign the contract. You're a screwed if you stay. So have fun. Live it up. You knew best. All right. I was it fun attacking the cop, by the way? Did you have fun with that? Oh, hell no. No. <laughs> that was the biggest mistake I made in my life. Damn straight it is. Yeah. You never need a cop. Uh, no, I, I've met some, but, you know. Yeah, well, hope you never have to call the police and the police officer knows what you've done. Right. Good luck on that. <laughs> All right, well, I've had enough, Daniel. Uh, thank you. Uh, Carolyn on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. I'm calling to say I totally agree with you. I think especially when a woman gets too needy, it's scary for a guy. The reverse is true. Now if, if I'm with someone they're too needy, I, I'm turned off. Yes. Yes, I, I, you know, I don't want to be around people who are needy. I don't want to have to, to, to I don't want anybody who's high maintenance. Uh, especially, I think, uh, I used to be in a position where I would be dating someone and they made more money than me. And I think it kind of gets scary for a guy where it's like, do, you know, do I, maybe I really like this gal, but can I, uh, can I afford to pay all her bills, to pay her rent, to pay her student loan, her park car payment? Um, and, I, and now we're not where I'm in the opposite position. I'm thinking, you know, gosh, I, I like being responsible just for myself. Well, that's that's what I like. <laughs> All right. Well, Carolyn, thank you for that. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Did you know now if you have an iPhone, you can listen to our show live anywhere in the United States? Go to our website, BlowMeUpTom.com for details. That's BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.